Hey guys, Steph the Illuminated Nerd here. Today we're working on part two of building my NAS and Plex Media server in a Fractal Design uh, Node 804 case. I've got all the hardware here uh, that we're gonna be using for the build. So uh, I'm gonna explain all of the hardware and then we'll start building the system. Let's get right into it. Before I show you all of the hardware that I ended up getting, I thought I'd explain a couple of the requirements with Plex as far as um, hardware transcoding and why I ended up going the direction that I went with my, my Xeon processor. Uh, when it comes to using Plex Media Server, you should always be aiming to direct player content. So what that means is that if the codec, the video and audio codec that your media file is encoded in is supported by the client that you're using to play that media file, then you don't need to transcode that file at the server level. It will just download the media file and direct play the file on your client. So my Android box, I have a Zidu X9S, the, it will support H.264 and it will support H.265. So if I have a file that's encoded in either of those formats, it will just direct play those files. Um, as opposed to expecting the server to transcode the files into a format that my client supports. So that's what hardware transcoding is. It's basically that your whatever client you're using doesn't support decoding the codec that your media file is encoded in. So you can actually uh, go out of your way to re-encode all of your content um, with for Plex in a format that your client supports. So if you do that, then you should never expect transcoding to happen if it's exactly in the codec of audio and video that your client needs, right? So you should always be aiming to do that. You can use FFmpeg, um, uh, or you can even, uh, Plex has ways of, of uh, re-encoding your media for you so that it's always ready to play in the format that you need. So that's always the, the best direction to take. Now, with that being said, if you, want, if you don't want to go to all that trouble or you just want it to transcode or maybe you're sharing your Plex Media library with uh, a bunch of people in the outside world and you have little control over what clients they're using, that's where hardware transcoding is definitely going to help. So there's a couple directions that you can take, you can take for hardware transcoding, the first of which is by using an Intel CPU that's at least a KB Lake generation that supports Intel Quick Sync. So Intel Quick Sync is, um, Plex supports Intel Quick Sync for hardware transcoding, and that means that there's, um, on Intel CPUs that have an onboard video card, a, a GPU that's on your CPU, uh, such as the i3-8100 or the Xeon E3-1200 uh, series that uh, I bought, it can use the chip on the graphics card to do hardware transcoding. And not only can it do that, it can even do it in a Linux Docker container. So if you're using Unraid and you plan on running Plex in a, in a Docker container, Intel Quick Sync will be the least painful way to make that happen uh, and generally the easiest way to make it happen um, if you're building a new system. Now, if you've got an older system, maybe you have a you know, previous generation uh, AMD system, or maybe you have an older Intel CPU that doesn't support Intel Quick Sync because there wasn't an onboard uh, graphics card on it. Great, look at option two. Consider an NVIDIA Quadro P2000. It's a uh, workstation level um, GPU that's not, uh, limited for transcoding. So Nvidia took the consumer levels like the GTX cards and they've limited to they've limited the transcoding to two streams at a time on those cards because they're meant to be consumer cards. They're not meant to be uh, you know, workstation cards where you're encoding 20 streams uh, at a time. So if you have an Nvidia Quadro P2000, it will have an unlimited number of streams that it, it can encode out of the box. So you can take an NVIDIA Quadro P2000, you can put it in um, your NAS, and you can pass that NVIDIA Quadro P2000 to a Windows virtual machine, install the NVIDIA drivers in your Windows uh, VM, and expect Plex to be able to hardware transcode and encode. Uh, and it, it will do that as a beast. Like the NVIDIA Quadro P2000 is a strong card. It will do like 15, 15 
15, 20 streams, no problem uh, at 1080p. Um, <clears throat> but with that being said, if you're insisting on using Linux, uh, you can actually use a Linux virtual machine. Like let's say you install Ubuntu on a Linux virtual machine, uh, and then you install your NVIDIA drivers. There is even a patch that will allow you to take any uh, GTX card and it will uh, sort of unlock that two stream max. Um, so that would allow you to uh, have an unlimited number of streams that you can encode. Unfortunately, decoding in Linux is not yet supported because of uh, Plex just needs to catch up and um, release a new version that has the latest version of FFmpeg built into uh, Plex so that it will be able to handle the uh, decoding in Linux. So that's just sort of coming. So even if you invest in NVIDIA Quadro P2000 now and you want to run things in a Linux container, it will definitely run a lot fast and you know that they're going to eventually release the decoding in the future. Um, they have said so a few months ago that they're sort of working on it, so we can expect that. So there you go. That's uh, all the information I have that kind of helps you pick uh, some sort of a, a piece of hardware that you need to move forward. So now I'm gonna go over the hardware that I got. So I ended up uh, with a Super Micro motherboard. Uh, of course, it had to support MicroTX because of the case, but I also wanted one that would support uh, a Kaby Lake Xeon, which is an E3 1200 V6 uh, processor. Uh, it supports Intel QuickSync and desktop virtualization, which is a requirement for uh, Linux, Plex, Docker container, hardware transcoding, and Plex, uh, which you'll see me set up. Um, and it also supports ECC memory, so that's just a bonus that I can get uh, ECC memory for server resiliency and of course I needed eight SATA ports uh, because I've got eight hard drives so that way I can keep my PCIe slots for other stuff than uh, SATA expansion boards. So I have a EVGA Supernova 550 watt power supply and a, uh, a Noctua low profile cooler to fit on that Xeon and because we have a limited amount of space in that micro ATX uh, case so sometimes low profile is necessary. There's the Xeon E3 1275V6, some Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut Thermal Paste, which is my favorite, and uh, a stick of DDR4-2400 ECC memory. One of my project requirements is that I want to be able to transfer from my source PC to my target NAS at 10 gigabits or as close as possible. So for that, I've got a, a switch that can handle 10 gigabit connections, two of them, and two 10 gigabit network adapters. And I've got some networking cable. These are actually CAT8 cables that can handle uh, the, at least the 10 gigabit speed. So let's talk a little bit about hard drives. So my plan is to have one uh, download drive which will be in my M2 slot that's built into my motherboard that'll just be a plain SATA 3 hard drive uh, into the M2 slot and then I've got two adapter cards that give me two more M2 slots uh, those are gonna have the 970 Evos one of which will be a Plex cache the other one will be an Unraid cache uh, so that I'm not transferring directly to my mechanical disks, which are slow. Uh, I have four uh, Seagate Ironwolf NAS drives for the sake of storage, one of which will be a parity drive, three of which will be my actual storage array, so I'll be starting with nine terabytes. So uh, let's start building. <laughs> So it's generally best practice to take your motherboard, CPU, CPU cooler, uh, stick of RAM, your power supply, plug them all together without putting them into your case to see if everything boots up the first time. Sort of a, like a sniff test to make sure that there's no hardware that's failed. Uh, and then once you've proven that you can get into the BIOS the first time, then you put everything into your case.
Hey guys, thanks for watching. In the third episode of this series, we'll install Unraid, transfer to the NAS at 10 gigabits, set up Plex Media Server with sonar and radar, and set up an APC UPC for power outages. See you in the next one.